And you know, when the apron goes on in our house, that that means we're gonna cook. Today, we're gonna make some banana bread, but I'm not gonna put the pecans in. Did you know the banana bread is the most searched bread on the internet? And do you know the history of banana bread? It comes from the Great Depression when food was very scarce and people didn't want to throw anything away, not even a banana. So there you go. Put it in bread. We have sugar, flour, eggs, bananas, pure vanilla, baking soda, and butter. So first we have to melt some butter. Microwave safe dish. So a stick and a half of butter. We start with the butter because it needs to be melted and then cooled somewhat. Alright, then in the sifter, I'm going to add... I'm going to add two cups of flour. A teaspoon of salt. And one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. really nice to have a one-handed sifter. You can still do stuff with your other hand. I sift the flour even if it calls for pre-sifted flour. I mean, even if you have pre-sifted flour, I will still sift it. I think it makes the bread better in my opinion. And then we'll set this aside and smash some bananas. I veer from the recipe a little bit in that it says to use four bananas and to only mash two of them and you're going to puree two of them. Well, I use three bananas and I'm going to mash them all. Sometimes I think if you have too much banana in your bread, it makes it gooey. All right, that part is finished. Set that aside, put this away. 
No, I don't wash my sifter. It would turn into gunk if I did. I just make sure that it's everything's knocked out of it real well. All right, then I need to mash the bananas. And I'm gonna do those in a shallower container with a fork. I like it when they get speckly. It makes the best bread. I wouldn't eat a banana that looked like this, but makes the best bread. And it doesn't matter if they have a brown spot or two. Two of these have pretty big brown spots in them. Alright, I'm going to cut them into, break them up into smaller pieces. So that it's easier to mash. Sometimes you can find the perfect bananas in the clearance section of the produce at your grocery store. Those make the best banana bread. The ones that are almost black. So we have mashed the bananas. I just fork mash them. I'm not trying to make mashed potatoes out of them. Oh. Microwave keeps beeping because the butter's ready. Is he whining because he can smell the bananas? Because that smells like his yummies. All right. So now I need I need my mixer. You could do this with a stand mixer, hand mixer, or whatever. Stand mixer might be nice because you have to whip it for 30 set or for three minutes. So here's where you I don't know what that was all about, but he obviously got spooked by something. Alright, so in here I'm gonna place the bananas that we just mashed. And the recipe calls for a cup of sugar, but we're going to put in three quarters of a cup of sugar. Because I feel like it's sweet enough from the bananas. It doesn't need a full cup of sugar. All right, so I'm going to beat this for three minutes until you get like a banana cream. All right, so we have beaten up the bananas and the sugar until it resembles like a cream, like a banana cream. And so to that, we are going to add the butter, which is in the microwave. Not fully melted yet, so I'm not sure if this will work. Oh yeah, that'll be fine. Okay, so 
we're gonna add that and then the eggs but let me i want to incorporate this butter first To that mixture, we're going to add two large eggs. And then we're going to beat that. some vanilla. I don't ever measure vanilla. I just kind of eyeball it. sure to scrape your sides with a spatula. All right, so now we're going to slowly incorporate our dry ingredients. doing that. Even with my stand mixer. If it has a splash guard on it, it still gets flour everywhere if you do this too quickly. little bit and then we can turn it up and whip it together so after you get the dry ingredients incorporated that's when you would fold in with a spatula any nuts that you put in it we made it with nuts last time so I'm not going to put nuts in it this time this will make two loaves of banana bread and one of them we're going to send to my husband's office. They like to have treats in the break room. sit there for a minute hopes that the drips will fall off into the bowl all right so like I said I'm making two so I have two pans here that I'm going to spray the bottom of and we just use the aluminum throwaway tins they work best for us All right, 
now let me just make sure that the sides all right so now we're just going to pour it in the pans half in one and half in the other so if you didn't want to put nuts in your banana bread but you want to have some nuts you could put them on the top now Excuse my finger, my hands are clean. Okay, so the dough is a little tacky, so you want to make sure that it gets through the whole pan. Those are two loaves ready to go in the oven. So I'm going to put them on a tray. I'm going to put them in the oven for 60 minutes, 350. Here's the recipe again, if anybody was wondering what recipe I use. I did have like a family recipe and somewhere in... Um, the move to Virginia, it is not with my stuff. But you can look it up on the foodnetwork.com, banana bread with pecans. The other thing is we always sanitize the counters before we and after we bake or cook make it a habit and it's just something that you're always going to do. As well as the cooktop. We have a an unspoken rule in the house and that is whoever cooks it doesn't have to clean. So we both like to cook, so that works both ways. But so if if M cooks, I clean, and vice versa. But that doesn't count for baking. <laughs> Timer, sixty minutes, and I'll see you when they're finished. And here we are, sixty minutes later. You put in a toothpick. If it comes out clean. They are finished. Now they just get to cool and we get to enjoy them.